You know, all people who come from outside Spain should get big round of applause. She's flown halfway across the world. So big smiles and big welcomes. Thank you. Uh, is it going to show up, Joe? No, I'll, I'll, get it, I'll get it going. Just start. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Joe. And thank you, everybody, for making the time uh, to come here and listen to my presentation. I appreciate it. So um, I'm Ekta Deng, as Joe already mentioned. I'm a partner at Phenox Venture Capital, which is a Silicon Valley-based venture capital arm that uh, invests in companies all across the globe. And uh, we have uh, you know, invested in several companies, and then get to that. Uh, we are actually a venture capital fund with 18 different funds, ranging from 20 to $200 million each. And most of our LPs are big corporations in Asia and some of them in Europe as well. Uh, we've invested so far in 135 uh, companies and um, uh, we have about 88 team members all across the globe um, actively uh, looking for investment opportunities um, all across. And uh, some of our popular investments have been Rigetti, which is a popular quantum computing startup, X.AI, which is very famous in terms of uh, um, optimizing and uh, using machine learning for personal assistant applications. Effectiva, uh, which I'll talk about as well, is an interesting startup. It's a women-led startup that is looking into using emotional and emotion and facial recognition technologies for a variety of applications. And then we have Osaro, which is a road robotic uh, arm-based company, and um, you know a lot more that you can, uh, you, you're welcome to come and explore on our website as well. So we invest in several continents, like I mentioned, um, but primarily we have done investments in United States, Japan, and also in Southeast Asia. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, how to raise a successful startup from an investor's standpoint. So looking at it from an entrepreneurial uh, you know, eye, um, there are definitely rich learnings I'm sure each one of you have, but looking at it from an investor eye, you would be curious to know what we look for. So hence I thought it would be a good topic to introduce on how we, uh, the investor community, envisions or expects from the upcoming startups. So in that capacity, the top techniques for raising a, a, a good startup would, be, would start with effective communication. Now there's somebody who actually came up with a startup with a two minute, uh, whatever, with a, with a one minute pitch, which was, we drive synergistic mobile, you know, you can read through the pitch. But really, uh, effective communication boils down to uh, being able to deliver a message very quickly in plain, simple language that everybody can understand, even a layman. I think that's where the power lies in terms of effectively communicating to the other side on what your mission is. The second point would be systematic approach to fundraising. So there are startups who are, you know, who come to me all the time and say, hey, I'm a seed startup, a seed stage startup, but I don't know if I should call myself seed or I should call myself Series A, it varies across geography. Um, should we raise a huge amount of money at this time so we don't have to bother about fundraising every now so often? Should we raise it at a later date? So here's the answer to that question. I mean, this is obviously, you know, there's no rule to it, but there is what we have seen in terms of uh, the norm, uh, particularly in the United States, you know, um, but I'm sure I think uh, in terms of uh, the stage of the growth, it would ap have applicability all across the globe as well. So my feedback is raise only as much as you really want to use, because you don't want to dilute yourself very early in the game. Once you have built up your company and you have built it with the strengths that you have, not not just your core DNA, but also you have gathered together a team around yourself, which is empowering you in multiple ways, go ahead and you're welcome to use um, you know, more investor money as you reach that stage. So uh, decision around when to raise, how much to raise, look for common guidelines before you, you, know, you just go and ask for money, I guess. 
um, some of the uh, guidelines that we also uh, give to startups who are asking for you know um, venture capital money or trying to raise uh, different stages you know money from different stages across different stages of growth is a give a sense to your investor on some metrics the investor really cares for um, definitely there are investors who have a who have a huge love and passion for technology but the end of at the end of the day if you are an investor you want to see how much you will make and when do you make money essentially so they are absolutely looking for metrics around cash flow break even when do you become break even uh, what's the revenue expectation how are you going to achieve that and uh, you know how much money you want to raise so if as an investor i want to know how much of dilution you're causing to my money that if if i'm an early um, investor uh, that you know you you would be I would be very interested in knowing on what my journey would look like along with an entrepreneur. So give that insight and visibility to your investor on what um, these numbers look like. The next one is, of course, a short crisp. I already talked about effective communication, but really uh, the idea is that you're able to say everything you need to say in a simplest possible language uh, and and at, in the time that is you're required to say so. So here's an example. You know, if you're given only X minutes to talk to um, a, an audience about your pitch, try and take one minute less, not one minute more. So if you plan on taking one minute less, you will, you know, buffer for uh, any delays you may have during your pitch. And if you're told you have only X minutes, at least do it five minutes less. This is, I mean, this is obviously. Um, you know, it varies and depending on who you are pitching to, but the whole idea is buffer for some, buffer some time for delays that may happen. Diversify your investment. This is a big takeaway. Um, there are startups who come to us and say, hey, you know, there's uh, this big uh, family office who is willing to invest in us and they're in, they, are, they are open to taking the whole round. And my question back to them is, is that really what you want? I mean, you should look at an investor, not just as somebody who's going to bring capital, but you should look for avenues for, on smart capital as well. So um, please, please, please diversify your investments. You know, um, at times, the family office may be great because they have a legacy business in a certain domain, and you can use it. but. Uh, uh, make sure that you have thought through your strategy on whether a corporate um, VC would be interesting for you, a financial VC will be interesting to you, which geography this investor is, what relationships they have in a particular geography. As much as an investor does diligence on a startup, I really um, applaud startups who ask me the right questions and make sure that they are also doing an appropriate diligence on the investor. So again, I think I reinforced most of these points, how good of an evangelist in this case, you know, the person that you're going to is for the company. Um, if a family office is investing, great, but are they also going to watch for the company? Or they're you know, just going to invest and hope for the company to grow its, on its own? Really, again, something to think about and, and value the, di the diversification that has to be brought. Then follow fundraising, latest trends in technology. This is again uh, something very interesting. You know, it's not just that where the money, is, you know, it's not just who is providing the money, but where it's coming from as well. And are those investors new age investors as well? Are, they, are you thinking of your opportunities in trying to grab money? And when I say that, I'm looking at a company called Telegram, most of us know it's a, it's a very uh, popular chat, group chat uh, platform, and they raised a significant amount of money through ICO. So it, it, now that said, doesn't mean that ICO is the right route or crowdfunding is the right route or going to a family office is a good option or going to a corporate VC. It could be a combination of all these. It could be only one. And it really depends on 
your own strategy and how you think that you can get, generate maximum value out of this network of investors that you are bringing to the mix in the company as well. And at what stage you are bringing that mix. Uh, at times there are seed stage startups and there are a whole lot of those who are not necessarily very breakthrough in, in terms of technology but have figured out a great business model. And they are you know, exhausting themselves in trying to look for money from the corporations, which necessarily may or may not necessarily be a fit at that stage of the company and for the kind of thing that they have developed. But if it's a breakthrough technology, I mean, it's, and the company is very early, it is very um, likely that the corporation, um, corporate VC arm may be interesting for them and vice versa as well. Um, the next one is build effective partnerships. I already mentioned about Effectiva. I'm very proud of this company uh, for two reasons. Phenox Venture Capital is an investor in the company, but also it's a woman-led company. And uh, they have a great technology, and more than the DNA of the company, they are thinking of the right strategic partnerships. So if you Google up for them, you'll see that they are already partners with SoftBank, and uh, they are enhancing the uh, the robot capabilities of uh, SoftBank's robot, and they are using Nuance, a company who's empowering their platform with voice recognition technologies as well. So what they can do with emotion recognition and the partnerships that they have established is game changing in terms of the application that has brought forward uh, through Effectiva. And then, um, you know, have a clear vision essentially of what you're trying to achieve. Um, so build startups based on current market needs and explore the consumer pain point. You may have an awesome technology, but if you're not ready for the market, don't expect the market to adopt it. Um, and that's uh, something that is um, very challenging and is usually the case for breakthrough technologies. So think about if you're trying to address the market, then which market is appropriate for you and what timing for that market is, is, uh, is appropriate for your company. The last but not the least, assemble a passionate team. And a good example of this is Rigetti, which has now become the, the name in the quantum computing world. And Finox Venture Capital is an investor, early investor in Rigetti as well. Um, of course, this company is now resonating with a whole lot of investors, not only for the breakthrough technology it has brought uh, to the fore, but also because of the fact that they have assembled a team that really includes the who's who from IBM, Google, Microsoft, Alibaba, Nokia, Intel, and so on and so forth. So it's really, uh, uh, the power is the people. So it's, uh, it's very important that you select the right team, be very selective in terms of choosing diverse skill sets coming to your company through the teams as well. So that pretty much brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, and uh, really appreciate being here. I'm thoroughly enjoying this out summit. Thank you, everybody.